Ruben is going to speak about how to boost your system performance. So Ruben, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. So, <coughs> hello everyone. My name is uh, Ruben Weintraub. I'm the founder and CTO of Gidel, and I have uh, about 40 years of experience on accelerating platforms. Um, and I want to share with you some of my uh, knowledge. Who have you heard about uh, algo trading? Okay, so algo trading is uh, in the stock exchange where computers are competing to buy and sell. Back in uh, 2007, I met people, and for them, one millisecond worth a hundred million dollar because there's no second chance. You have a computer, if you bid first, you get the deal, and one microsecond later, no deal. Okay? Then, about 10 years ago, and of that time, everyone works only with the C, and there's regulation, and people told me no way FPGA would be in the market for that. 10 years later, the pricing was dropped only to 4 million, but 4 million for one microsecond. At that time, if you're not in the FPGA, you're out of business. And I was so surprised to see uh, IT manager of uh, one of the biggest banks in the world, and he was so experienced about what FPGA is doing, and more important, how we can get a lot of FPJ designers at a, a lower uh, salary rate. Uh, that already what he told me. So going back to our need, boosting the performance. So the first question is, what is performance? So for some people, performance is the throughput, which is actually combined from three elements. Uh, and what we see today is that the, these three elements are getting bigger and bigger in each one of them. We have higher re camera resolutions, we have higher frame rates, and we are using more and more multi uh, cameras. So the throughput is coming really essential to accelerate. For others, the latency, like in the algo trading. Others may be accuracy and uh, detectability, to be more accurate or to be more detecting can be relevant. Maybe you need to be on a drone and then the weight is more crucial, or you need to be within a small uh, LA environment and then the size would be crucial. And of course, thanks Oliver, concept to market may be crucial to others and maybe several of those. So the first thing I would say is to analyze what is your need to accelerate performance. And then, for example, with the latency, some people are saying, let's say uh, a doctor needs to do a surgery, and you used to work with uh, 20 frames per second, and you know you need to have two frames or one frame latency. Now you're working with a 60 frame per second, and some people are saying, okay, let's have two frame latency. But the actual performance you need is still the same time because the reaction of the doctor is the same time. <clears throat> On the other hand, as we saw in the algo trading, the latency dropped down severely. Okay, so understanding what you need. Another thing is alternatives. For example, accuracy. <clears throat> we all talk about AI. A uh, couple of years ago, not so far away, everyone worked at floating point for AI. 
Then Google came and said, you know something? We can work at 8-bit and lose only 1% of accuracy. But the fact we are working with 8-bit enables us to have a lower uh, cost impression and to have much more um, logic. And maybe with that, we're going to get, uh, with additional layers, we're going to get much better system. So these are elements to understand uh, about the different options and capabilities that we have. And I think a very uh, important thing is to understand that we all care about accuracy, but sometimes we exaggerate with accuracy in one point and we lose other elements, including accuracy, on another point. And therefore, I think taking back your, what you need and think, why do I need it? Why do I need this performance? Why do I need that performance? And then we can realize where there's another way, there's another alternative maybe to solve it better. And here's just some of the bottlenecks that can appear in all kind of uh, systems. And if I'm focused just on the processing for now, uh, then you can select the AI a engine, GPU, CPU, FPGA, and so on. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you for Oliver, because I do believe strongly that the modularity is crucial uh, with the, today's market. And also, sometimes we want to accelerate our performance, but we are not sure what exactly the customer will ask. And also, with the large uh, quantities, what Oliver pointed out is you start with the small things, you fill the market, and then when you want to make the quantities in production, you know exactly what to do. So in that case, you can uh, combine the two things, the low cost as a production, but the fast time to market, the fast reaction, and so on. So <clears throat> as I told, I strongly believe in the hybrid uh, computing. Uh, there's things that are better to do in the AI engines. GPU, obviously, everyone knows about them. And there's things to do in the CPU. And as Oliver said, definitely the FPGA processing is something that can accelerate a lot, reduce power. Um, and today, it's not so expensive. You talked about the pricing and so on. I remember about uh, 14 years ago, I went to a customer. And they purchased from us FPGA board that cost $10,000. And he told me, you see, the computer is $40,000. Your board is only 10000 and it's doing 80% of the job. OK, so when we're talking about pricing, it depends on the systems and so on. Obviously, today, the FPGAs are much cheaper, and Oliver knows it very well. So here is an example where I believe strongly, and that is if you take the number crunching uh, and use that in the FPGA, such as the uh, histogram. So running the data and making a table, this is a, uh, a pure number crunching job. And that the FPGA can do very fast. And uh, you don't care about latency and things like that. And also <coughs> very accurate. and low power and so on. But analyzing the table, this sometimes is very simple. You want to know minimum, maximum, fine. But if you want to look at specific angles in order to know exactly how to map your gamma uh, corrections, to tailor it exactly to the scenario or to the image and things like that, this is a task for a CPU that can do a very good random uh, thing. So going back to Oliver's concept of modularity. From my perspective, to have the FPGA IP with the CPU 
software that completes it as a full class, this is a module. So with the Gidel technology, we can use this kind of modules and combines all these modules in the uh, applications. Uh, <clears throat> moving into an example, OK? What you can see here is a HDR example. In the HDR, many cameras are doing HDR in two ways. One way is two exposures, a high exposure and low exposure. This is excellent because they can get a, a good uh, image in both cases. However, there's an issue. What is the issue that they have? Frame rate. And today, the market demands a lot of frame rate. So if you can get one frame and get HDR out of it, it would be good. However, if you look at the image on the left-hand side, the original image, some of the data is very dark. It's in the shade. Some of the data have a direct sunlight. It's very bright. So if you're going to use more, more uh, exposure time, you're going to burn the area under the sun. If you uh, close the shutter, you have very dark areas where you have the shade. So <clears throat> in the processing of the HDR, you can't use all just a regular gamma, because if you're using just a regular gamma, uh, especially in bio images, which has a higher throughput, each pixel uh, needs to be accelerated, but not according to its value, because then if you do it according to its value, you destroy the contrast. You want that acceleration to be according to the scenario and the area around you. And what you see here on the right-hand side is that an HDR that is taking in account the area, taking in account the coloring to uh, make sure that we keep the coloring, and also to look at uh, uh, doing some edge enhancement or having an option for edge enhancements as well. Uh, if you have uh, sharp eyes, you may be able to see some elements of uh, edge, the edge enhancement as well to, be, to have, again, better recognition or better detection. And <clears throat> here's the advantage of doing that through the FPGA. On the left-hand side, we see a large uh, a computer needs to do the processing, and <clears throat> it cannot it's very limited with performance. So you can see on the, where the arrow shows you a difference in the um, edging and uh, analyzing the edges and coloring when it gets in and out the shade. On the FPJ, we can run the HDR, the gamma, the uh, white balance, and compression all in the same flow and make it simpler. Uh, and the reason is because in the FPJ, you can run as much as logic as you want. So we can add more complex algorithms to develop uh, the algorithm compared to the software. And that's why it's better uh, thing. And definitely, we can run that on speeds ra faster than gigapixels per second, which is today demanding. Now, <clears throat> when we want to go from the concept to market, as Oliver said, it's very important to understand. Using models absolutely helps. I agree. Then you have the design sign. You have the coding. You have the compiling. You have the testing. You have validating. And in many cases, you do need to have improvements. You need to have a cycle and cycle and cycle. So what we found out is something amazing. We found out that when you're developing something complex, such as uh, quality HDR or quality compression or other uh, high-level uh, algorithms of detection, you, pu you put time 
on the coding, you put time on compiling, but the most time that you put is in testing and validating, and in even more than that, on the improvements that you want to do, because the sm improvement are small changes that you need to run through many, many videos or many, many images. And if you run those in software, it, the time of the validation and improving is slower. So we are offering uh, an example of having a camera simulator that runs videos as you want into the images under the uh, development. And then you can access directly from the host to your application and send it to a frame grabber to see the results on the screen. And finally, you can have all the features of acceleration and so on with a very small uh, computers uh, <coughs> that we can demo on the, our boot, uh, boot uh, D20 over here. Uh, so first of all, everyone is welcome. And the other thing is if you have any questions, I would be more than uh, welcome to answer you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Questions? I could allow one question. No? OK. You thank covered you. it all, Ruben. OK, thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> My next speaker is Frederik Schönebeck from the company Framos. And Frederick is going to talk about fundamental 